bring everyone's attention. Can everybody hear the back of the room? <coughs> I'm using the mic and I don't want to shout too loud given, given uh, some of the issues. So is that okay? If everyone can hear, then I'll, I'm comfortable that we can <coughs> begin. I'll start the, the meeting by uh, my opening remarks before we go into the agenda uh, for, fully. Um, this is an adjourned meeting, um, and the reason the, the meeting was adjourned, and we have apologised in public, and I know most of you avoided having to turn up twice, um, we were given some information that it would not be right for us to make the meet, meeting or take the meeting into uh, decision without certain representatives being present. Um, we have um, approached all those particular people who were uh, uh, required to be here, and uh, we've had various regards, but we do welcome uh, Nicholas Smith as the parent governor uh, to, to the meeting and we, we thank you for your input in this uh, decision making process. Um, so, so that has been fulfilled so we can go uh, forward. just want to say uh, we are very mindful of, of the difficult decision uh, that has been put towards the scrutiny committee. Our job is to gather evidence and to make a decision based on the merits or not uh, of the call-ins. Uh, there's two call-ins, and for the sake of uh, clarity, they will be dealt with separately. The first call-in, which is item four on the original agenda, will be the issue around whether consultation uh, around the closure of um, the school takes place. And then the second call-in decision we're being asked to consider is the one around the funding formula which is number five on the original agenda. So I hope people understand that's how we're going to deal with that. Uh, I have nothing really more to say in as much as um, I know there are people who are giving evidence tonight who may not have ever been in this position who are making it uh, certainly ways to, for them to feel comfortable. I hope everybody feels comfortable and I hope everybody makes the decision uh, based on the evidence that they hear and, and obviously their own uh, thoughts. I don't particularly believe this should be used as a political uh, battering ram or, or political ding dong. Mm -hmm. I don't think parents and, and particularly people involved in the issue would, would, would uh, appreciate that. So we can um, you know, act in, in, in a responsible uh, and dignified way to everybody, including witnesses, uh, try to you know, not make it like uh, an interrogation or as evidence ga gathering. I know that's difficult sometimes with the setting it feels a little bit like a courtroom drama at times, having been on the, the other end of that chair. So if people can uh, fully take part in the meeting, I do realise some of the, uh, the children in the audience are easily starved, so I, I, I know it's an emotive issue, but we can sort of keep the decorum and uh, our, our tones in a, uh, an orderly fashion, that would be absolutely fantastic. So I'm looking forward to hearing the evidence and, and getting the uh, business on the way. I have it did indicate at the other meeting that you know it would not be fair to prolong this any further and we would try or will endeavour to come to a decision tonight. There are a number of witnesses, quite a bit of procedure to get through. Um, however, I do hope that we can make a, a decision in a timely fashion so, so people aren't inconvenienced uh, any further. Again, I apologise for the uh, postponement of the previous meeting and I hope we can uh, make a, a fully informed decision. Without further ado then, um, I'll go through some of the more mundane issues. Are there any apologies for absence? Chair, we have received apologies from Mrs. H. Shoesmith and Damien Cunningham, and from the pair of government representatives of Kathy uh, Kathy Dyson. Okay. And then the other issue is are there any declarations of interest? Nicola, yeah. Um, Tonight. 
who mentioned the proper subject matter. Tom uh, Harney, Council Tom Harney is going to uh, do that for us. Tom is also circulating uh, some written uh, papers to back up his verbal evidence. If members are okay to receive them, they'll be distributed. Over to you then, Tom. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and thank you for the kind comments. Um, I assure you I will restrict my uh, time to within the limit. Um, if you look, um, members, at the um, papers, you will see that there, is, there are a lot of um, reasons for the calling, and a lot of them refer to basically technicalities in the sense that there are things that are missing from the report which should be there, and things that are there which certainly we as governors feel shouldn't be there. But what I want to do this evening is to focus not so much on technicalities, but on the reality of the lives of the children in the school. I think it's important that we start with that. Um, and I think in terms of the background of what we have done over the years, I've circulated now um, a um, paper which refers to a motion of the council which was resolved on the 14th of February 2011. That was unanimous amongst those who were there. And it agreed that we should have a review, the council should have a review of the current provision for children with uh, profound multiple learning difficulties in Rome. That is referred to uh, in the papers, and but where has, somewhere has been done, even though it wasn't put to the cabinet as was agreed, but that work that's been done is not referred to in the papers. And certainly our belief is that had the council followed their own advice, and that is followed it two or three years ago, by looking at the needs of the children, they would then be in a position to assess exactly how much that would cost. And what we're doing now, and I would allege this, if you look at this, it doesn't give those details, because obviously the children that we have have got very special needs because of the particular circumstances. A lot of them need one-to-one, -one, for example, and later on that will be referred to by Ian. So, Really, that is, um, that is what I want to say, except just to say, and to reiterate, you've already done it, thank you, Chair, and that is that we have a number of parents who want to speak to you, to us, sorry, a number of, um, of teaching assistants from the school, and then that is for, for this particular calling, and then we have the finance when Ian over here will speak to you. So if that's okay, Chair, I will leave it there, and we'll listen to the actual people who really know about
receive government funding, not the places allocated to the school. Each child in a place attracts £10,000 place funding. With 40 places and 23 occupied by children, this is a cause for concern at the Lindale School. Each, ch school, each child's place is topped up with what we call plus funding, depending on the child's needs. The local system for paying plus or top-up funding is included within the Cabinet report, also called in, proposals for changes to school top-up payments for students with my needs. The proposed banding system has been developed with full involvement of head teachers working with children with special educational needs. The approach is developed with the support of a seconded head teacher and recommended to cabinet by the school's form. The proposals are necessarily developed based on a majority view. All of this, the size of the Lindale School, <coughs> the decreasing role and the current and future financial projections lead us to the firm view that the responsible course of action is to consult on whether the school should be closed. It is very important to state that this proposal is not in any way informed by the quality of teaching and care for the children in the school, which is good and in many aspects outstanding. And it is recognized that for the parents who choose for their children to attend the school, it is their choice and the school is highly regarded. It is also recognized that any proposed school closure is, is distressing for the people involved. Chair, I'd like to say that the consultation process will be fair and transparent and will take account of issues raised as part of this calling. All <coughs> views will be taken into account. There will be options which emerge which the local authority has not thought of and options already considered <coughs> and not thought viable which will be reconsidered. I will ensure this is a genuine and thorough consultation with no stone left unturned. The children of Lindale deserve high quality and consistent care and education in a setting which is viable in every way. This proposed consultation is a clear step to achieving greater certainty and to end the uncertainty regarding the school's future, which has existed for the past six years. In bringing this report to Cabinet, the local authority is acting in a responsible and reasonable manner. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Tony. Uh, there will be opportunities later to talk directly or ask questions to the Cabinet member and the lead secretary. Uh, the next phase of the uh, evidence gathering is, is exactly that um, the call for, for witnesses. I did. Um, for, you know, for all the obvious reasons, uh, offer the uh, ability for the three <coughs> uh, parents um, representatives uh, to sit together, but they are entitled to give their evidence separately. Is that need to be taken up? So, what, do all three parents want to come up together or separately? It's entirely, entirely separately. Okay. So, the, the first one I have on my list is, is Zoe Anderson, who is a um, parent. So we welcome to the committee. Uh, and the, as I say, there's no time limits. Only bear in mind that we would help to make the decisions. Okay, thanks, Zoe. I'm Zoe Anderson, I'm a parent of Mel, and the parent of Lily Anderson, who is eight and a half, and who's been at school since she was two and a half. Um, Lily has a chromosome deletion, um, which she was born with. <coughs> we didn't know before she was born, so it was a rather nasty surprise, but she's had problems since birth. Um, we did a rough tally on the way here of <coughs> the problems that she's had over her eight and a half years, just to give you an idea, really, of, of, of you know, 
know, what we're dealing with. Uh, we've counted that we think she's had approximately 10 bouts of pneumonia plus other um, associated chest infections. She's had two respiratory arrests, one bout of something called acute lung injury, which is generally fatal in adults, let alone small children. She's had approximately five bouts of septicemia. She's had multiple urine infections, kidney infections. She's had approximately seven surgeries. She has had three stints <coughs> in intensive care, two of which have been on life support, three separate stints in high dependency unit. Uh, we've calculated she spent approximately two years of her life thus far in hospital. She suffers from uh, recurrent gut failure, gut problems, and always will do. She is epileptic and when she was younger would have up to 40 seizures a day. Uh, and she also suffers from something called precocious puberty, which means that she's been in puberty since she was three years of age and will be associated with problems that are going to win with that. So in a nutshell, that's that's been her eight and a half years thus far. I've been asked to talk to you because as cabinet members, clearly you are not in our shoes and you cannot be expected in any way to know what it's like to bring up a child such as her. Thankfully, it's a very rare occurrence and, and most people would have come across it. Um, but you need to know what it's like. You need to know what you're dealing with uh, when you're looking at these children. <coughs> you need to know things like when we were first told that she was likely to die and she was two and a half, um, and we were told by Dr. Aaron Park that um, after many hours of <coughs> being in resuscitation, that it was unlikely that she was going to survive. Um, and understandably, as a parent, I don't remember this, but I sat and touched my knees and rocked for about half an hour. I have no memory of it because I was in total shock. Not long after that, she made it to all the hay. We were again told she was at death's door. There's nothing they could do for her. And it was, it was the pure roll of the dice, whether she survived or she didn't. Um, thankfully, having spent <coughs> two and a half weeks on life support, spending four days lying flat on her front, on absolute max bed on every treatment that they could give her, she thankfully survived that. Again, um, later on in her life, again, um, we, we were there rushing, running up the corridor with her in all the hay while they were resuscitating her en route, but again, being told that. Um, she needed life support and she was in a very critical condition. Again, on other occasions when um, she's just had very recently nine and a half hours of spinal surgery, which involved titanium rods being inserted to shore up her spine, which was collapsing. Um, had we not had that done, it was going to, the surgeons were to see her off. Uh, we did have it done and the major risk there was that she was going to die during surgery. Um, because of the length of the surgery and the complications she had. So what you've got here is a family who on <coughs> more than one occasion have been in such a desperate state. And nobody who's ever you know, lost a child will know what that's like. You should. So you've got someone who really shouldn't be here, who is, who is absolutely precious to all around us, and yet with all this, she has managed and manages to go to school, which is somewhat miraculous really, and most people think that she shouldn't be able to go to school because of all her problems, but she does. <coughs> she managed to go to school six weeks post spinal surgery, six weeks, only and only because the surgeon was happy that I could absolutely oh guarantee no. that she was safe and totally safe. She is so vulnerable that our park has missed illnesses and it nearly killed her, <coughs> Alder Hay has missed illnesses and it nearly killed her, mm. Claire House, where she attends regularly, has missed how ill she was and she's been blue lighted out of their way ambulance now mm. on more than one occasion and that's despite her being fully staffed with nursing and nursing care. It's taken years for the staff at the middle school to get to know Lily and for Lily to get to know them. 
uh, it's not something that I've really completed for years. It was two years before I believe Harry Sinai on her own. It was months of integration before I believe her in school, months and months, and a year before I was even left on transport. It took three months just to change the transport not so long ago. She is that complex and she is that vulnerable. And if you make a mistake with her, you're risking killing her, and that is not being dramatic. That is history dictates that that is the case. And I will not ever allow that to happen to my <coughs> child. This is a child who is never on her own, ever. She has a video camera on her at night. Even in hospital, I don't even leave her to buy the paper. There's somebody there with her 24 hours a day. Because despite even being in hospital and having medical care, they don't know her and they have missed on many occasions what's going on with her. She's also a child who is very shy. She doesn't like strangers. She does not cope with strangers. It's taken her years to get to know the staff in school. If she's stressed in any way, it affects her health. She self-harms. She bites her hands. She'll bite her head. She'll hit anything around her, any furniture with whatever she can. It also affects her health in terms of her gut and her problems therein. You have a child that at some point in every day has pain and discomfort. In eight and a half years, she has had no physical childhood, no learning to ride a bike, no learning to swim, nothing like that. All she's had is, is pain and strangers doing really horrible things to her. What you're looking at now is the one place, other than Claire House, that I can send her and know she will be safe. If I had any doubt at all, she simply would not go. I would never take that risk with her. Lily is unique in her own problems, but she's not unique in that school. Every child, and unfortunately, sadly, every parent behind me has the same tale to tell in relation to their own child. The same moment of sheer desperation when you're told that your child is critically ill and may die. They've all been there, they've all been through the mill, and every single child is extremely vulnerable, just like she is. We are being asked to allow you, who don't know these children, to make a decision regarding her future. And I've looked at reports, and reports call these children, <coughs> there's been labels, CMLD, SLD, ASD. I've never seen a report that says Lily Anderson, Neve Hardacre, Scott, Emma. No report has ever referred to these children on their own and the effect this is having on these children. It's always generic. It's facts, it's figures, but no one has ever looked at them and their problems. And I know that the local authority has to think in the long term, but we're talking about real children and families' lives here now. And if I had Lily now, I would have sent her to the same place and I would want her to go to the same school and start it all over again. We're being asked to send them. Initially, we were given eight options when, when we were first presented with this by Julia Hassel. And only one of those options involved the closure of the school. There were a number of other options. For some reason, the consultation is decided as a consultation on closure, which makes us as parents feel that this is not open-minded at all, because the consultation is looking only at closure, not the consultation on the future, keeping the school open. We've heard about falling norms, and <coughs> We've heard how vulnerable Lily is, so our children far worse than her in school. It's a sad fact that last year we lost three children. That is the nature of the school that we have and the nature of the children that are in it. We would love to change that and we would love to be in a position to send them to one of three primary schools like ours and my other children, but that is not the case. <coughs> the two schools we're being asked to consider are both full. We're told the standing school will be full. 